All right. Well, let's go ahead and get going. Uh, thank you to everybody that joined us this evening. My name is Nell Burkett. I'm the curator here at the Crested Butte Mountain Heritage Museum. Uh, before we get started, I just wanted to quickly do a, a land acknowledgement. Uh, so the museum recognizes that we are guests here on this land, historically Ute territory. We acknowledge that this mining and ranching community that established itself at the end of the 1800s was at the expense of the Uncapagre Ute and the Tavawatch Ute who were forcibly removed from this area due to the Brunel Treaty and the manipulation that followed. We hope that you will take time to visit our neighbor, the Ute Museum located in Montrose, Colorado, with exhibits developed in partnership with the Ute tribes by History Colorado, our State Historic Society. While we can never do this history justice, we do include information about the Paleo Indians of the Gunnison Valley, the Ute people, the Brunel Treaty, and the Los Pinos Indian Agency in our exhibits. The Crested Butte Mountain Heritage Museum knows that we have a great re responsibility in representing many stories from our history, good and bad, and we continue to listen to those voices when they are ready to share. Uh, so also for people to know, we are recording this. So if anybody misses it or wants to be able to share it later or refer back to anything, uh, you can find this on our website, crestedbuttemuseum.com. Uh, we hope that you'll consider becoming a member. Uh, members help us uh, keep the lights on and help us take care of our collections. We have over 18,000 items in our collection from local history. So becoming a member or making a donation goes really far in not only helping with that, but also to run programming like this. Uh, we wanna make sure that these programs are free and accessible to everybody. In order to do so, we really rely on donations and support from those folks that are attending. <laughs> Um, next week, uh, next week on Thursday at seven, we have Dr. Heather Thiessen Riley of Western Colorado University, and she is presenting on Dia de los Muertos, Life and Death in Celebration. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that as well. Be sure once you've registered for this one, you've registered for all of them, and you'll get reminders for everything coming up. Uh, and with that, I'd like to introduce Marqueta Zukova. She is legal representative and community advocate with the Hispanic Affairs Project. Thank you so much, Marqueta, for being here with us tonight. Thank you, Nell, for inviting me to speak tonight and for this great opportunity. Uh, so, um, as now uh, mentioned, I work for the Hispanic Affairs Project, which is a nonprofit organization here on Western Slopes. And we also have an office in, in Gunnison, uh, Montrose, and Grand Junction. And uh, my uh, presentation tonight will be about the Cora Indians, which uh, is an indigenous group from Mexico. And we have um, a large Cora population here in uh, Colorado. Uh, so uh, I would like to, at the beginning of my presentation, would like to clarify a couple terms. So as I mentioned, the Cora Indians, they are indigenous peoples, but I will also be mentioning another term, which is mestizo, and uh, mestizos are people of combined European and indigenous uh, American uh, heritage. Uh, and uh, um, what I will be talking about, so I will talk about the Cora uh, life and culture uh, here in the United States and in Mexico, uh, their migration to the US, how they, and when they came to Colorado, and uh, about their integration as uh, immigrants, as a minority culture, and uh, what challenges uh, they are facing. So uh, here on the map, uh, you can see uh, where the uh, Cora Indians uh, who are living here in Colorado, where uh, they came from. It's in the mountains of uh, uh, Sierra Madre Occidental in the state of uh, Nayarit. And uh, they, uh, most of them from our um, community, from our immigrant community from uh, in Ghanisan, they came from a small town, their municipality uh, seat uh, from Jesus Maria. Cora Indians, 
uh, they are people that are very shy and they are very, very isolated uh, in, in the mountains in Mexico. And they are also considered one of the poorest native people uh, in Mexico. Uh, there are uh, different um, communities, different villages uh, of Kora uh, Indians, of Kora families uh, living in, uh, uh, in, in, in Nayarit. And as I mentioned, uh, their municipal capital is Jesus Maria uh, with, with a hospital, with their municipality uh, seat. But many of uh, these Kora Indians, they live uh, in the mountains. Uh, they live in, uh, they call them uh, small uh, ranchos, rancherias, which are small farms uh, in a group from 2 to 12, sometimes 20, but uh, they live uh, from, as an example, uh, they live from uh, Jesus Maria, from a bigger uh, town, they may live a couple days um, uh, by uh, uh, walking uh, or just riding a donkey or a horse. So uh, it is for them, it's hard to get into um, um, civilization uh, or in a, in, a, in a bigger city because of their uh, isolation. Uh, in the US, uh, uh, most of the Kora Indians live uh, in uh, here in, in, in Gunnison, and also there are some families in uh, Montrose area, a uh, couple families in De Delta, uh, but here in, uh, in, in Gunnison, I think we have the largest population of the uh, Kora um, immigrants. And uh, here is a photo of, of Jesus Maria, uh, the, the, the capital of, of Kora, uh, community and uh, here also I mentioned already that the Kora Indians but they share the territory even here in Jesus Maria but here in the mountains and in the state of Nayarit they share the territory with other indigenous groups uh, like Mexicanos, Tepehuanos, Huicholes so uh, this area is very rich in, uh, in diversity, in indigenous uh, diversity. And here on, on this picture, um, you can see far there a uh, few houses and those are the, the, the ranchos. Uh, as you can see, it is in the middle of nowhere and uh, uh, it is very hard for them to um, go to a, a bigger city or, or community if they are somewhere up there in the, in the, in the mountains. Um, and how many of, of them uh, are there? Uh, for me, this was one of the, the hardest question to, to, to answer. And people always ask me, so how many Koras uh, live here in Ghanisen or how many of them are there in Mexico? And uh, according to the Mexican census, there might be around 25,000 Kora Indians living in Mexico. Uh, as I mentioned, most of them come from the state of Nayarit, and in Nayarit there are approximately 15,000, 16,000 of them. Uh, and uh, the, the reason I put a couple question marks um, behind the, the 25,000 uh, uh, is that uh, it, it sometimes it's very hard to count them and register them especially those who live in the, in the ranchos, isolated in the mountains. When a baby is born uh, there in the, in the, in the mountains, uh, sometimes the parents forget to register the, the birth of, of, of the baby. And they may remember a year, a couple years later, or maybe never. So it is sometimes hard to know how many of them live there. I've experienced people here, Kora, Kora Indians here in Ghanisen, they don't know um, their exact date of birth. Uh, they uh, sometimes, uh, one day they tell me, oh, I was born in September. Next, next day they tell me, no, I think it was in, in December. And uh, 
sometimes in, in Mexico, when they are trying to figure out when they were born, uh, they just mention, oh, it was at the time when the uh, uh, when we were picking up mangoes from the trees or when the trees were blooming. But uh, for them, uh, having the conception of uh, knowing when they were born uh, doesn't seem to be very important. And for that reason, it's hard sometimes to know uh, the exact number of uh, the Cora Indians in 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 uh, in Mexico uh, uh, as well, and because they 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 are not registered, then later on uh, it can cause some problems for them in Mexico that they uh, uh, would not be able to get their ID, for example. Here in the United States, as I mentioned, in Colorado. Uh, we have a, a large uh, population of, of Kora Indians. And again, I am not sure how many. I am just estimating 500. And it's uh, from a very recent experience when I was helping with a census and I called uh, some of the Kora families. And, and uh, when they started sharing how many uh, people, including their kids and other relatives, uh, live uh, in their household, then uh, I uh, figured that there might be more people than we actually uh, know uh, about. And also uh, another reason uh, for them to um, be counted here in the United States is that they, uh, many of them, they, they want to be uh, in shadow, they they don't want to be they don't want to be count, counted uh, uh, at all. So, I I'm not sure how many exactly we have here in 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 Ghanisen. Uh, the Kora language, uh, uh, it's a uh, it's their indigenous language. They some of them they speak Spanish, depending on their education, depending if they. Uh, live in in uh, in Jesus Maria, or if they live uh, on on the on the ranch, ranch, rancho uh, in the mountains, and there are even with, with this one uh, uh, indigenous dialect with the choral language, there are five different uh, linguistic um, uh, variants. Uh, so uh, from from different communities. And uh, it can be a challenge because sometimes the chorus from different areas are using different dialects. They cannot understand uh, each other. But the main dialect is considered to be the dialect from um, uh, Jesus uh, Maria. Um, uh, older people, the elders from the, the Cora community in, in Mexico, they uh, mostly speak Cora their Spanish uh, is, uh, is limited. And uh, um, as I mentioned, it depends on their, uh, on their location. Uh, uh, if they uh, can go to school and uh, learn, uh, learn Spanish, if they can get some education, depending on how many siblings uh, they, they, they have. Uh, and uh, I also wanted to show you uh, that um, in, in the past, uh, uh, they were not, uh, as I mentioned also, Kora is mostly an oral language. And in the school, in, the, in Jesus Maria, they were not teaching the, the, the Kora language uh, in the past. But now they, uh, they have books, uh, bilingual books in, uh, in Kora and, and uh, um, uh, Spanish. And uh, this is uh, to encourage also from the Mexican government to encourage uh, uh, the Cora speakers to learn their language, the, the written language and, and, and uh, reading. So uh, this is for um, an elementary school and, uh, and um, it's, uh, um, it's one of the textbooks in both uh, languages. Uh, the uh, one of uh, a U.S. Uh, linguist, uh, Eugene uh, Kasat, uh, spent some time in the Kora community, I believe in the 70s and, and 80s, and he was able to learn the language and even a written form. 
and he wrote a Quran Bible. I have it right here, uh, which is amazing because many of the Quran, as I mentioned, uh, many of the Quran I know here in Afghanistan, they um, they don't really know how to read or write in Quran. And um, uh, uh, Betty Kassat, uh, wife of, of this linguist who wrote the Bible, uh, she used to come to Ghanisan and she was teaching the Quran language. We use this, this, this textbook um, and she was teaching a, a, a Quran language, Quran reading and writing for native Quran, Quran speakers. Uh, it was it was amazing. I took a couple classes. I don't speak Quran at all. I might know a couple readings, that's all. But uh, the amazing thing was that the class was full of Quran uh, Quran uh, Indians. And uh, these people, they were just so, um, uh, uh, they were working so hard to learn their own language, to learn how to read it, how to read the language and and how to write uh, their language. So um, uh, it's just um, it, it it is an it is a very interesting language. It it belongs to a Uto Aztec and um, language group uh, to which uh, the youth language of youth Indians uh, is related. And. Uh, uh, because of the different Quran dialects, sometimes it causes uh, sometimes it causes a challenge for interpretation in in, in Colorado um, when we we don't have many Quran interpreters. And I know that, for example, at the at the, at the courthouse, they uh, call a Quran interpreter in in Mexico. And I've seen and I experienced that they were able to get this Quran interpreter on a phone from, from, from Mexico. And then uh, when someone was at the, 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 the courthouse, then in the end they couldn't understand each other because the, the Quran interpreter from Mexico uh, was speaking a different dialect than the, the Quran uh, person here in Colorado uh, at the courthouse. Uh, on this picture, I just wanted to show you all the gray area is uh, where uh, at least 70% of Kora speakers are living, which is in the mountains uh, in, in, uh, in uh, Nayarit. And it covers a, a big area. So um, it's just uh, amazing how is it all spread in the, in the mountains and how isolated. Uh, the communities are. Uh, every tortilla we eat is the result of our work. That's one of the Quora uh, sayings. Uh, uh, the, 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 their way of life is very traditional in spite of all the modern changes and technology coming to, to their area. They uh, were still uh, able to maintain a high degree of self-sufficiency. Uh, they didn't get electricity until early 2000, I believe in 2002, when they finally got electricity in, in, in Jesus uh, Maria. Uh, and uh, their way of life is, is very tra traditional, as I, as I mentioned. There is also a division of labor. So the, the, the Kora men, they are usually farmers, hunters, builders, um, uh, they can be also traditional healers, while the, the, the uh, women, uh, they are house, housewives, they are supposed to care, take care of the, uh, the, the house, bring water, uh, their, the, their craft work is just, just, just uh, amazing. And uh, some of the, the traditional healers are women uh, also, and I will talk about their, their health and, and uh, traditional medicine uh, later. Uh, <clears throat> another um, uh, way of uh, making money for them uh, is, uh, especially in the recent years, it's uh, drug cultivation and trafficking. Um, I mentioned a number of times that they, they are isolated communities, but the, the, the roads and in infrastructure is getting much better. They're building more roads and uh, 
uh, these uh, isolated communities are being more accessible and uh, the climate is also great for cultivation of, of marijuana and uh, some of the the coras got into the drug uh, trade uh, and uh, uh, it's also a better access for the for the cartels uh, and uh, they are t trying to take advantage of, of it. It is what I heard from from our coras here in Ghanisan uh, that uh, once uh, someone uh, gets into uh, drug trafficking, it is very hard to leave and and uh, um, stop being um, involved in in a, in a drug trade. Um, here um, in the United States, uh, the 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 coras are mostly doing construction work. Also, a lot of lot of ranching, working in, uh, on ranches, uh, working at restaurants, um, cleaning houses, hotels. Um, some of them, especially uh, the uh, younger generation uh, who came here as, as children or who were born here, but they come from Kora families. Uh, they uh, work as, as teachers at the bank, different different uh, occupations. And here I wanted to share a picture of uh, just a second of a Kora woman uh, who um, is uh, doing some artwork, and uh, you you. If you live here in Gunnison, in Crested Butte, you, you, you've probably seen uh, these beautiful uh, bags that the, the, the Kora Indians are, are making. And she's probably working on something similar uh, too. And I have an, another one. They, uh, they don't do it here in Gunnison. They uh, usually bring this from uh, their uh, communities uh, from Mexico and um, they they sell it or they just give it away as a, as a nice present. I also wanted to share uh, their, uh, show you if you can see it, their traditional um, shoes, uh, sandals, they call them huaraches and this is a beautiful artwork that they uh, they made by 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 hand, and I've seen them wearing these uh, sandals, these huaraches, even in winter. Uh, so um, it is it is amazing how they <laughs> don't feel the cold <laughs> here. And here is another picture of uh, of a woman who used to live here in in Gunnison, who is. Um, uh, knitting uh, some of her, and you can see behind her um, uh, some of uh, some of the the Kora traditional um, artwork. Uh, their religion, and of course um, uh, fiestas, uh, it's a it's a type of syncretism. It's a combination of their Kora indigenous beliefs and the Catholic Church. Uh, the chorus, uh, 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 most of their uh, fiestas, uh, if they are uh, connected to to the Catholic Church or they are an, or their own indigenous um, uh, fiestas, uh, are mostly uh, about music and group uh, dancing, uh, and uh, the majority of the chora festivals or fiestas are connected are linked to the to the saints. They would celebrate a day of, of Saint John, for example, in June, or day of Saint James in um, in in July. And uh, these uh, festivals, fiestas are open to everyone, not only to uh, people who uh, are preserving these indigenous beliefs, but they are open to, to, to everyone. Uh, 
one of their traditional uh, ceremonies, uh, fiestas, are the mitote ceremonies. They are uh, associated with corn and it's a celebration of life and, and human uh, beings. They celebrate it three times uh, a year. And uh, one of the, the uh, uh, popular or very famous uh, celebration is the celebration of Holy Week. And there can be a whole presentation about just celebrating their La Semana uh, Santa, uh, which is uh, not the same as the, the Catholic Church would, would celebrate. It's about uh, they are chasing uh, each other uh, in the um, in the in the town they are painting uh, themselves with different different colors uh like i said this can be a presentation for a long time i will and i will encourage everyone to read a little bit more about the their celebration in our cora brochure that we created um ah, 10 years ago uh and it can be found on a gunnison county website or I can share it with Nell and she can uh, email it to you where you can learn more about the, the uh, Semana Santa uh, celebration. Uh, the, the Semana Santa celebration uh, in the past was very, uh, very secret. They were not allowing people, they were not allowing uh, uh, anyone to um, um, take pictures or record the, 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 the celebration. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned, it has uh, become so popular over the years and more, more and more people uh, from outside um, uh, are coming. So they are opening it a little bit up to, to the outside world uh, as well. And um, the elders, the Kora elders, uh, uh, consider their uh, traditional ceremonies like the mitote ceremonies to be more peaceful and they think that these ceremonies should be preserved uh, uh, for the future generations because they think that uh, it, for example the, the La Semana Santa celebration if there are more and more people coming more alcohol and drinking and violence is involved so they are getting concerned. Here in the U.S., they don't celebrate uh, uh, their fiestas um, uh, the same way as in in, uh, in Jesus Maria. Their religion uh, is well; it's 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 different. Some of the Koras they they go to the Catholic Church. Some Koras they uh, are members of uh, other uh, Hispanic uh, Christian uh, churches. So. Uh, the religion here in in the U.S. it's uh, it's it's different, and as I said, they don't celebrate their, their traditional uh, ceremonies uh, here in the uh, United States. Um, about their health um, and uh, how they are, uh, what they are doing, how they are uh, treating themselves as um, when they are sick. Illness is like a person it hears. It's another Korah saying, and they consider illness a punishment from God for those who fail to fulfill their religious obligation. Going back to uh, La Semana Santa, the Holy Week celebration, they are um, required uh, to participate on this, uh, on this um, celebration. Uh, especially men, they have to participate for five years, they have to paint uh, themselves with different colors each year, and if they don't participate, if they don't um, fulfill this obligation, they can get sick, they can get in trouble. I heard cases uh, from uh, people from here that they, they were dealing with some legal issues or they had to go to the court or ended up in a jail or were, got really sick, and they just told me, well, I know why, because I missed uh, our Semana Santa celebration and now I am being uh, punished. Uh, so it's very important for them to fulfill with their uh, religious obligation. And I know Koras who 
travel each year to uh, Jesus Maria for uh, this uh, celebration, just to make sure that everything is done correctly and right and they can be healthy. In, um, in Jesus Maria, they uh, have a, a hospital. Uh, uh, it's, um, uh, in this hospital, you can find everything. You can find uh, modern medicine, um, modern doctors, uh, but also uh, some traditional uh, treatment and uh, traditional healers. Because having their traditional medicine, uh, their herbs, uh, it's very important uh, for uh, them. Um, so uh, they have their own uh, traditional healers uh, for bones, uh, for uh, all types of, of, of issues using different herbs. Uh, they have, have her, uh, their uh, midwives. Uh, so uh, for them, uh, it's very important to have this treatment. Uh, for example, for uh, the um, COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, they, um, one, one of them told me, well, we, we have the, we, we know how to treat uh, this, uh, this virus. There, uh, he mentioned that there is uh, a tree that if we uh, uh, use the, the branches from, from, from this tree, if we uh, uh, cook them in a, in a, in a certain way, then we can get a remedy for for this uh, virus for this uh, illness. Uh, so that's how they are uh, trying to um, um, help themselves if there are any medical um, uh, problems. Um, and I just wanted to show you this picture that uh, it's a uh, it's a midwife um, uh, from. Uh, uh, the, the hospital who is healing, who is making sure that uh, another uh, pregnant Cora woman uh, is doing well uh, in her uh, pregnancy. Uh, and now uh, uh, the Cora uh, migration. Uh, the uh, um, first um, they were not only Koras, but Mestizos who started coming to the United States. Uh, uh, it was during the Bracero uh, program, which was a guest uh, work program um, from uh, 1942, 1964. It was created during the World War II uh, to bring uh, people from Mexico to help uh, on railroads and on farms. Uh, and uh, after working here temporarily, then they returned uh, back to Mexico. And that's how first people from the uh, Cora area uh, came to the United States. The Bracero program was, was canceled in the, in, the, in the 60s, but people were still, they were just so used to coming here for, for a season uh, for work that they were still crossing the border, but um, illegally um, to come to the United States and then uh, they return uh, back to Mexico. In the 80s, um, the Coras started to come to Colorado to work uh, in the mountains as uh, sheep herders, uh, borregueros, that's how, they, that's how they call it. Uh, and the, the ranchers uh, like them because they uh, are really hardworking people, they are used to the isolation, living in the mountains, and <clears throat> the chorus also enjoyed this experience because they uh, they were working here, uh, doing their seasonal work, uh, and they, because they were living in the mountains, they didn't spend uh, a lot of money, and uh, in the fall, they would return uh, back to their communities uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, Mexico. Um, and then in the 19, 19, 1990s, the, the border crossing 
uh, especially the illegal border crossing got more complicated. So they started to bring their families and they were staying longer and longer until uh, for some of them, the migration became uh, more uh, permanent here uh, in the uh, United States. And uh, the, the, the reason they, they came to our area is uh, uh, because you know, it started with a with, with, with couple people from the Kora community who were working as sheep herders, and then they were bringing their uh, other family members, uh, usually uh, guys, uh, um, men, to come with them and, and work um, in the, as, as, as sheep herders uh, here in the mountains. I know a uh, few people from our Kora community who used to work as sheep herders uh, in, in, the, in the past. Uh, and uh, uh, now they are uh, living here in the in Afghanistan uh, full time with their with their uh, families, and the Kora migration uh, it um, it it started. It was someone from Jesus Maria who started coming uh, over here. So that's why we have uh, people mostly from the the Jesus uh, Maria uh, area uh, here in in uh, in Colorado. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, some of them are going back home usually for their uh, for their celebrations. Some of them were able to uh, legalize their status. Uh, they are U.S. citizens now. Now, uh, unfortunately, some of them they haven't been able to do it uh, yet. Um, their lives in, 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 in Colorado is, uh, or here in Gunnison, uh, if I am more specific, uh, 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 is, um, it's a big challenge for them. Our organization is uh, working with, with, with immigrants uh, on their immigrant integration, and uh, we are um, uh, using a two-way uh, immigrant integration model. Uh, which means that both immigrants and the receiving society are working together on uh, um, on a better community, and uh, both sides are contributing uh, contributing members of the of the community. Uh, one of the biggest uh, challenges I've seen uh, for the the, the Koras are uh, is the is the language uh, of course as I mentioned the challenges with with interpretation if they don't speak uh, the uh, the same dialect or you know many times people would just as assume oh you speak Spanish so we'll just speak uh, uh, in Spanish uh, with you uh, uh, it's also uh, incorrect uh, because some of them, some of them speak Spanish, some of them speak very basic Spanish, and some of them, they, 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 they don't. Their children who uh, go to school here, they uh, speak um, Kora with their parents, with their family at home, but at school it's English, and English uh, becomes the dominant language for them, so they, uh, uh, the Kora children would not even speak Spanish. Uh, at all. Uh, another um, another challenge in their integration and in their life uh, here in the U.S. would be their culture difference. Being an indigenous person uh, coming from an uh, isolated uh, community somewhere uh, in the mountains can be uh, can be challenging to navigate the system, navigate the, the, the school system, the legal system, uh, navigate um, everything. And, and uh, that's why we, we, our organization, we, we try to work with different uh, agencies, organizations uh, here in Afghanistan or in Western Slope to uh, help them to understand uh, the, the 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 process and the the, the system here uh, on in the United States and uh, one of the biggest uh, challenge um, or barrier of, of integration is the the, the legal 
uh, immigration legal legal status. As I as I mentioned, uh, uh, some of them were able to uh, become citizens. Some of them are legal permanent residents, and some of them are still struggling of how to uh, legalize their 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 status. And especially with with with, with this group that. Uh, uh, is uh, undocumented. It is it is hard for them to be more more integrated. I don't believe a full integration can uh, happen until someone uh, becomes citizen uh, of of the country where they where they live. Um, uh, some um, of the tips for for successful integration or for our community to. Uh, help in the integration process would be uh, knowing who lives in your community. Get to know your 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 neighbor. Uh, we cannot apply the same rules uh, of integration to every immigrant, every culture that lives in the same community in the same country, and uh, we should be aware of the diversity of immigrants and people who live in our, our community. So um, it's not only Hispanic immigrants, it's not only uh, 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 Hispanic immigrants living here in, in Ghanistan, because there is a diversity within the Hispanic culture. They can be immigrants from Central America, immigrants from South America, uh, uh, and each of them, uh, they have different culture. Even their language can be 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 different. So it's it's very important to to uh, not stereotype uh, and understand the diversity and uh, people who live in 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 our community. And uh, it is also very important uh, to understand the difference between the, the mestizos and the indigenous uh, uh, groups. I've noticed it with our Cora immigrants and uh, the mestizos uh, from, from Mexico that, um, and this might come from, from their country, from, from, from Mexico, that uh, sometimes some of the mestizos here, they consider, consider the Cora Indians uh, to be a, a lower culture, uh, something less, uh, and sometimes they treat them uh, this 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 way. So there is a, a, a difference, and uh, there is also a, a challenge for the the Kora immigrants to uh, be integrated into the the the, the mainstream mestizo culture because. Uh, many times they are not integrated into the, the main Mexican culture in, 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 in Mexico. Uh, I, 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 I believe this can be uh, very, very, very challenging for, for uh, uh, the Kora Indians, but for any indigenous group living here in the, in the, in the United States to, to um, uh, be, uh, integrated uh, into the into the community, but uh, it's very important for for us uh, who are helping them, who are aware of of their culture, to 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 help them to overcome these these barriers. And uh, I think I will stop here. I just uh, wanted to show you. I don't. I didn't think I show you this beautiful bracelet, also made by uh, one of our poor uh, women uh, here in the in in Ghanisen. Um So uh, I think we still have time for some questions. Uh, and I know there are so many other things that we can talk about. And and I think each of my slide can be uh, for um, a new presentation. But I just wanted to give you this this um, overview of 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 the the Cora Indians uh, and their life in Mexico and uh, uh, the life here and the struggle uh, that they are going through uh, here in Ghanisen. Thank you, Marquera. Um, 
if you could, could you stop your screen share and uh, show us all that really cool stuff again? You know, okay. such little boxes and it would be really, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, really okay, cool. I'll do the, the stuff. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so um, I had this, this beautiful, uh, okay, oh, this is much better, yeah. I have these beautiful uh, bags and they have, they love all the bright colors. So you, you if you live here in Ghana, St. Christopher, you might have seen this, this very bright pink or green color of, of, this, uh, of these bags. And those are actually more expensive than, uh, than uh, I mean, I love them. They are really, really thick and they can handle uh, a lot of, uh, you know, they use this actually when they go to pick up mangoes, for example, in the mountains. So they just put the mangoes in there and, and uh, bring them back, <laughs> back home. Uh, I have a smaller one. This is a smaller version of, of one of the bags. Uh, then uh, what else? What did I have? Oh, yeah. And I have these, these uh, huaraches, the, the traditional sandals. Also, this is what they are using. And when they go, uh, they, they don't have hiking boots. <laughs> they are used to here going hiking in the mountains. No, this is what they are using when they, when they go even for uh, their two-day trip from Jesus Maria in the mountains, this is what they are wearing, their traditional huaraches. And it's a, like I said, they, they made this by, by, by hand. It's, it's, it's really, really, really pretty. And um, I have this bracelet. And uh, I also have the books. Um, oh, yeah, and the books. This is the textbook that they are using uh, in, uh, in their schools. Now, like I said, it's a uh, bilingual uh, education and they have bilingual teachers uh, from the, the Cora community in Spanish and, and Cora. So uh, there are some, uh, um, see, this is in Cora, Cora language, I can show you. Oh, wow. How cool. Yeah. And uh, this is their Cora Bible. So when I was when I was taking uh, the classes when Betty Kasat um, came to Ghanisen uh, some time ago, we were reading from from the the Bible, and everything is in Cora. So uh, this is the Cora Bible, and this was the the Cora textbook that we were using here in Ghanisen to study the the, the Cora language. Uh, different different stories and and uh, like I said the, the core I, I was learning I, I was just awful because I don't speak the language I wanted to try but my Cora friends they were very committed dedicated students and they were learning how to read and write their own language which which was amazing for me are those yeah. kinds of classes still happening no, no, uh, um, Betty, um, I, I haven't seen her for, for a few years and she would come here only for a couple months in summer and then she went back, uh, I'm not sure where, where, where she, was, she was from, but it was, it was, uh, it was a great experience and, and some of the Koras, they remember her when she and her husband were uh, in the, the Kora community when they were studying the, the, the language. So some of them remembered her. Right. So we did get a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, to start out with, uh, do the cores have a connection with the Aztec? And how old is the Cora community? Uh, I am not sure if they, if they had connection with the, with, with, with Aztecs, but I, I know uh, the, the, the First mentioning of the of the of the, of the chorus, uh, where I want to say in the 1700s, uh, that's uh, when. Um, let me see if I get the. Um, I want to know. I I think it was in the 1800s. That's that's when we we probably got. Uh, um, first information about the about the 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 the, the, the chorus i see you i'm 
Yeah. Uh -huh. You're going for your notes. What notes are you using? What book are you referring to? Oh, I, I had different, <laughs> different books. I, uh, uh, and I, I put it in my in my in my sources uh, the uh, the Cora the the uh, what would be in English the Commission of, of uh, Indigenous um, uh, People from Mexico they they wrote a, a book about the Coras and about their um, uh, about their uh, history and 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 uh, culture uh like i said we can we can, we can spend a, spend a lot of time uh just talking about uh all these all these little details uh the next question is uh and i'm so sorry if i say this wrong are harachas unique to the cora or are they worn by people from other regions i believe they are worn from um, um other people uh in 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 other regions uh it's just very probably they 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 might the the uh different indigenous culture will have different different design uh for them but they they just call them waraches uh but uh this is a this is a typical for the the chorus but i believe there are different indigenous cultures using different types of waraches okay uh, the next question we've got is, do most cores want their children to go to a local school, learn English, and be assimilated? Um, they, um, so, yes and no. They, they want the, the, the kids to go to our local school. They want education and better life for their children. That's why most of them come here to the United States. But they don't want them to be um, uh, assimilated because they they also want to preserve their, their their culture which is very hard here uh, if their kids they, they, they just become Americans they 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 yes they become uh, integrated assimilated in the in the American culture and it's hard for them to preserve their Cora culture if they don't uh, travel to uh, Mexico, to Jesus, Jesus Maria. Some of them, they, they don't, but some of their parents, they make sure that their children uh, uh, preserve a little bit uh, of their culture and uh, go to the, the Semana Santa uh, celebration. Okay. Uh, our next question is, is Jesus Maria at a similar altitude to the Gunnison County? It's a little lower. It's a little lower. I would I would say it's probably um, uh, Montrose going up there, Cimarron uh, area. Uh, uh, so it's it's not as 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 high as as our uh, altitude. All right. Uh, well, those are all the questions that came in this evening. Is there any okay. last thing uh, you'd like to share with us before we wrap up? Um, I, I, I'm sure I forgot many things <laughs> that I wanted to say. Uh, but if anyone is, anyone is interested in learning more, you can always reach out to me. And uh, also, um, the... We, we have our monthly meetings with our immigrant community, which is not only Cora Indians, but many of them, they, they attend our meeting. It's the first Friday of the month when we uh, share information about everything that is going on in the community on a local, state, federal level. Many times we have speakers also coming to our meetings. Uh, so if anyone, uh, uh, wants to meet some of our Koras, wants to know more, please let me know. I'll be happy to, to, to connect you or uh, have a coffee and just talk more about our, our Kora population. And, and they are just amazing people. Uh, the, you know, I, I admire them, them, them a, a lot because they uh, struggle a lot and uh, they are just trying to uh, make their lives better not only for themselves for their children so uh, it's just uh, I am fascinated by by their culture by 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 them and I'm just very honored to be friends of many of them oh well thank you thank you so much Marketa, for being here this evening and taking the time to 
chat with us and all of our attendees. Uh, thank you everybody for attending this night as well. Uh, be sure to check out the Hispanic Affairs Project. I dropped the link in the chat. Oh, thank you. Also visit uh, crestedbuttemuseum.com if you'd like to make a donation to support this program. Uh, other than that, we'll let everybody get on with their nights. And uh, thank you again, Marquetta. This was a real treat. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Good night.